growing up, I had no idea what it meant to be wealthy or to be rich. I mean, the home that I grew up in was $8,000. It was a house that my dad couldn't even afford to buy himself. He had to borrow money from his ex-wife, my, my mom, uh, to buy the house. You know, we lived in a small town, so, you know, for me, like, when you saw people that had money, you know, they had a big house, they had nice cars, but for me, it's like, I was happy when we would get all-you-can-eat cheeseburgers from McDonald's on Tuesday night. Like, that was a big deal for me. Like, we didn't grill out steaks. I ate ramen noodles. I ate Totino's pizza <laughs> religiously for most of my, my young life. And really wasn't until I got, well, wasn't until I actually became wealthy before I finally hit, hit millionaire status where I finally understood what it took. And when I finally started looking at other other people that want wealth, they want to be rich, I started to realize that there was one common factor why they, they didn't have it, why, why they weren't able to get this level of financial freedom, level of financial security, and recognizing it's about 95% of people don't do this one thing. And that's what I wanna talk about today. When you think of somebody that is wealthy, you know, what do you think of? When I lived in a small town that had around six to 8,000 people, like there weren't a lot of wealthy people that lived in our small town. So it really wasn't until we moved to the Nashville area where all of a sudden you start seeing some really big homes. The types of homes that you drive by and you ask yourself, I wonder what they do? Cause that house is ginormous. And as I mentioned, like not only was it me obtaining my own wealth per se but also it was being able to talk to other people that had amassed you know their certain levels of wealth and some of that was when i was still a practicing financial planner and you know talking to clients that had had, had accumulated you know their millions of in their nest egg but also it was talking to successful business men and women successful entrepreneurs and started to see a pattern of why they had what they had and then started to see a common denominator of why they had it and other people didn't and that's when oh it all it's all starting to make sense but you really can't understand what it means to become wealthy what it means to to become rich until you have a good understanding a framework of how that works and that could be talking to other millionaires, other successful people. But if you don't have access to that network, you know, one way to do that is by reading books or listening to podcasts. Now the book that I read that allowed me to begin to change my mindset, what it means to become wealthy is Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I know a lot of people hate on that book, they hate on Kiyosaki. But for me, like when I read that book, I mean, it just showed me that there is another way to build wealth, there is another way than working the nine to five, going to school, getting a job, and retiring when you're 65. Now in that book, like Kiyosaki doesn't give you like a roadmap or a blueprint of like step one, do this, step two, do this, and step three, you become wealthy. But what it does do is just shows you that it just really just changed the way that your brain is wired. If you're, if you allow yourself, allow your brain to accept that there is a different way, that there is another way to become wealthy. Now, Kiyosaki, once again, doesn't tell you what to do, but he does give you a few examples of one of the things that he mentioned is multi-level marketing. And for me, like I have some experience in multi-level marketing, not a ton of experience, enough experience to realize like it, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing for me, but in that book and in my experience with multi-level marketing and talking with all these other successful entrepreneurs, all these successful millionaires, the 95% that become wealthy, that achieve that sense of financial freedom is that they were willing to try something different. More specifically, they were willing to try to make more money, extra money on the side. And this can be in the form of a side hustle, but really it was trying to create something, trying to build something that is producing a substantial income source on the side in conjunction separate from your nine to five. Now for me, like when I first started to understand this, when I first started to realize this, like I had my financial planning practice. Yes, it was, I was a business owner. Yes, I was self-employed, but for the most part, like it was my nine to five job. There were ways I could increase my income, but when I started thinking about ways to increase it exponentially, I mean, that, that wasn't it. So a lot of times when you think about having a job, 
like many people, like you're excited to get a raise. And for some people getting a raise is getting like a three to 5% raise. Maybe it's maybe it's a three to 5% raise and it's a fat bonus on top of that. But in that type of situation, typically, typically you're not getting a 20 to 30% increase on your wages, on your salary. So how do you do it? How do you start increasing your income on the side that allows you to achieve this wealthy, rich status? And really the only way is trying to figure out how do you can not only increase revenue on the side, but also how can you scale it so that you're not putting, make doing time for money, that you're increasing your processes, you're increasing the revenue stream where essentially you end up working less and making more. Now I'm telling you, this probably sounds crazy. It probably sounds too good to be true, but this is the type of wealth thinking of, of a wealthy mindset that, that I didn't have, that I, I didn't get. And it wasn't really until, like I mentioned, multi-level marketing, fail. I also tried real estate fail so for me having the financial planning practice like that was successful that was a very successful business it wasn't until i started the online business which for me initially was the blog and that's goodfinancialsense.com starting this blog starting this digital asset that allowed me to create content create it once optimize it add revenue add ads add affiliates and now all of a sudden like i'm making money while i'm sleeping and that was a, <laughs> that just was such a, a change in my reality that I didn't even think was a thing. But once that started to grow, then I started to understand like, oh, this is how it works. Like this is how wealthy people become wealthy because they find something, an asset, an income producing asset that they can grow, that they can scale. And essentially you're just building off of it. And that's one of the main reasons why I love the online business because like I started with the blog, then it became the YouTube channel, then it was a podcast, then it was a book, and then it's courses. Like there's so many different revenue streams that you can add to this, this website, to this blog that allow you to have synergies where everything's just working together. And that's why you see a lot of successful businessmen. I mean, I think of, you know, Elon Musk and with Tesla and SpaceX and, and this solar company. I'm not really sure how Twitter or the X Inc. fits into that, <laughs> into that equation, but you get the idea when you have businesses that are all helping each other grow, essentially, you've got the organization, you've got the, the key hires, the key, the, the key leaders, you know, to run these businesses. Like it just, that's where it starts to grow exponentially. But it all starts with that willingness to try one thing, to try that side hustle, to try that business idea. And we're not talking about selling things on eBay. We're not talking about having a garage sale. Like that's great, unless you're trying to go to a garage sale to buy stuff for on the, the, the low and then flip it on eBay. Um, that's great, that's a nice revenue stream. But then thinking long-term, like how are you going to scale that? You know, how are you going to not have to go on the weekends trying to find stuff at a garage sale uh, and then trying to flip it on ebay you know then actually have to package everything up and ship it like these are great ways to make extra money and i think it's great to start there but then starting there and then letting don't let your brain get stuck there and it's this willingness to just try to experiment to put yourself out there i mean the, the ideas I mentioned, multi-level marketing, real estate, like those are just a fraction of the ideas that I failed at. There are several others that sounded like amazing opportunities, seemed like they were great ideas that were going to just make me <laughs> hand over fist in, in, in money that just didn't work out. But I needed to try, like I needed to see for myself that it made sense or it didn't make sense. And I'm glad, I'm, each experience gave me something. You know, I didn't, it didn't fail, like I didn't fail. I was able to learn something it's like, okay, there's, there's, there's a lesson to be learned here that you can apply that to the next thing or the next thing. And that's the beauty, man, of just putting yourself out there. But if you're not one of the 90, 95% that is willing to at least try to at least put yourself out there and just see, like, don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to your coworkers. Don't listen to your family members that want you to stay broke. Like don't let them win. Don't let you, don't let them infect your brain of the potential that you have. That almost happened to me. I'm so grateful that it didn't. Don't let it happen to you. Be one of the 95% that's willing to try to experiment 
And guess what? You might find yourself at a state of wealth and riches that you never thought possible. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.